Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Alex. I'm outside Stamford Bridge with Father. We just uh, lost 2-0 against Brentford and you know I was just having a conversation with someone before we started recording and they were saying you know they, they, they were very polite thanks for what you're doing you soften the blows mm -hmm. of the losses yeah. and like, I don't intentionally do it obviously we try and have a level-headed opinion but I think we can still agree it's not good enough no, um, not. but you know fans saying Pochettino needs to get sacked I mean I'm not hearing a lot of it in the stadium but you go on social media you'll probably see something yeah absolutely and this is our third defeat against Brentford in a row so it, it, it's a criminal criminal of offense in my opinion and the fact that this is against a low block teams as well we're just kind of like mirroring on what has been a, a tr um, translucent this season as well the fact that um, it's been a kind of like week after week against against a low block team like Brentford you knew what they're going to do. They're going to play here for a nil-nil draw. We need someone off the bench that can spark the game up. Unfortunately, we haven't got that insurance. First half, I thought it was kind of flat at times. It was just moving sideways, passing after sideways, passing. Barring from Noni Madueke chances um, when he, they hit the bar, and also Cucurella, I don't see anything that much positive, in, in my opinion. Completely forgot about that Cucurella chance as well. Exactly, and the fact that <laughs> in the first half alone, I think we missed a bit of Mudrik's sharpness in the first half, a big time, you know, because I feel like with, with Mudrik's quality and he can do bits left, right, left, right and centre, it's just kind of like, yeah, it, it wasn't as sharp in, in the first half, but it's still a bit flat, you know. Yeah, I, th I feel like we missed his pace and, on the transition, especially in the first half, because we speak about the low block. Brentford, for me, are not like what Ben was saying a Sean Dyche hoofball team. No. To me, they're not that team. I really I really respect Brentford. I actually like the way they play mm -hmm. because what they're able to do is, is play with a low block, yeah. but they also play good football as well. Exactly. Um, you know, it's not like they always pass out from the back. That's not what I'm saying, but they can, right? They can do it. And we've seen them go to big teams like Man City last year, and there's probably one or two others, mm -hmm. and get a result where nobody mm -hmm. expected it. And you know, it just happened to be that we're the victim of that again. Yeah, it's unfortunate as well that we get a loss at the wrong time of the season as well. And before, even before the Arsenal game, we always um, having a discussion on the run of on run of games that we had on 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 um, from from Arsenal onwards up until the after up, up until the Man City at home. We always kept kept talking about that, and I feel like this loss came at the wrong time because. After this, it's like the confidence are going to be low. We got Blackburn on Wednesday. We need a response against Blackburn. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be out of the cup. Yeah, you know what's crazy, though? I don't think that we're going to play well against Blackburn. I see us playing better against Man City, Newcastle, all of those games. That's the thing. Like, it, it feels kind of strange that um, we always tend to do well against the big teams. And unfortunately, against such a smaller team like Brentford, we always be getting confidence before the game, pretty much. But it's the same regular occurrence, and it's it's gonna be, it's not gonna be you know changing a lot un unless we get um, you know a, a, an insurance that from of the bench that can make a difference. Unfortunately, are we gonna rely on Broja and on David Washington to to, do, to make a change and to make a change of the game? Absolutely not. That and that is what I feel like. Not only we're missing Modric, but also that insurance a bit from the bench because. You got a lot of players on the bench. Like, who can you look up to? And that's the problem that we're going to have this season. But that, that's good. I don't even think that's an ownership issue, right? Because obviously, you would say, then say, "Oh, go and buy more players." They bought the players. Half of them are injured. Half of them are injured. Half of them are going alone. Look at Angelo. What, look what happened to Angelo. Apparently, he had a promising preseason. Then he get loaned out, and I feel like, okay, like I, I can criticize the ownership by the those decision making. Why you loan out Angelo? Because because I thought I thought according to the data he had a good, good promising preseason, but then loaned out for what? No, nobody could have ever predicted what was going to happen to mm. Nkunku, what was going to happen to Chukwameka, yeah. all these key players that were starting every game in preseason mm -hmm. who haven't played really any minutes in the Premier League yeah. since we started. So all those plans that Pochettino made before to build the team around certain players, those ones probably being some of the main ones, yeah. they've all had to change. So it, it puts it puts Pochettino in an awkward position because we've spent the money, but we're not actually able to use some of the players that we spent that money on. So it's kind of a, 
you know, it's great. It's an awkward time. But it is awkward, isn't it? That's the thing. And the fact that apparently, if you haven't seen the news, um, came out today about uh, Pavizio looking for another centre back. Apparently, we're also looking for another, po another forward like um, Ivan Tony or Victor Oshiman. Are we really going to spend a lot of hundred million pounds money for to sign another another key players? We should have done this like months ago, because getting to the season, like I feel like the criticism the criticism I can make here is that um, we were waiting too much. Like we were hope hoping that Nkunku is going to be fit, but where's the backup plan? What happens if Nkunku that it wasn't fit? And that's the issue that I feel like we can criticize on. But apart from that. If you look back at, at this game alone, like lineup selection, do I really want to get into posh about that? Like again, why why what why you leave um two lap two full backs on the bench, Reese James and Malagusto? I don't think Malagusto didn't do anything bad bad this season apart from the red card, but yeah, why why you kinda of start deciding on the right hand side? It's just like again, those decision making Gallagher again as an eight. Nina actually made a great point. Mm. She said it was height. And when you think of it like that, Brentford, they've got some big players. They love set pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have been a factor. And De Sassi has played at right back before, but it is still a bit of a weird decision nonetheless. Yeah, that, exactly that. Like, why, why would you leave a two full backs on the bench? That's the issue. What, why also you, you put De Sassi as a centre back than a right back? It's just like one of those exper experiment moments that like, went wrong. I don't want to see that again in, in the coming games because we've got a, a hell of, hellacious run of games in November and I can't see us getting a win at least, not until the new year. And that's the issue about it for me. Uh, can't see us getting a single win? Single win, no, up until the new year. I'm telling you now, if we keep playing like this against low block teams, we might do well against a better side, but what happens if we, do, we come across again in a low block team like Everton, like Sheffield United, like Wolves, Luton, Chris, Crystal Palace. What happened to that? And that's the issue because the mentality was of this team kind of like, all right, what happened last week at the Arsenal game? We, we kind of like screw it up 2-2. We should come into this game and thinking that, okay, we're angry what happened last week. We should go into this game with, with an anger that we had uh, unleashed on, on Brentford. It's just like, again, questioning the mindset and mentality of these players. What about you? What, what do you think of these players today? Um, I don't think it's as bad as everyone else thinks it is. You know, I'm happy for people to shout at me and scream at me. I'm not saying you are, but mm. other people and criticize them because I mean, it's a fan channel. But yeah. for me, I am a big believer in blind faith at the moment. Oh. I'm not saying that we needed blind faith with Potter. I think that was fairly obvious that was never going to work out. Mm. But I do think that Pochettino deserves blind faith. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what happens. Don't sack him. Don't get rid of him. Um, you know, you do such a good job with Espanyol. You did a great job with Southampton. You did an even better job with Spurs, mm. right? People yeah. say they didn't win any trophies. When did they win a fucking trophy, mate? Mm. You know, that's like saying, oh, you know, uh, someone did a great job keeping a, a team that gets relegated up for so many years but they didn't win any trophies well i'm sorry there's only so much you can do with some teams mm. so at chelsea the ceiling's higher so we know that we're not capped we're not financially restricted with the players that we can get like tottenham were yeah. and pochettino got to the end of it and it was never going to work out and he goes to psg a team that did what seemed to be great business and turned out to be terrible business it's an impossible situation to manage a squad of egos like that. So Pochettino, for me, coming in, I wouldn't have taken him as my first choice. I probably would have taken Nagelsmann or Mourinho. But that was looking at the here and now. If yeah. I am looking at the process, which is what Bowley seems to be doing, mm -hmm. I'm taking Pochettino because we're seeing a man who is capable, and we've seen is capable, of being at a club for five years or longer, Realistically, I think they're going to want him to be there for at least 10 years. They haven't sacked the coaches of the Dodgers very much, mm -hmm. so I can't see them doing that with uh, with Chelsea. Yeah. You know, that's what I would say to people: have a little bit of blind faith, 
Um, and, you know, people say, why? Why would I have blind faith and trust what I've just seen? We've just lost 2-0 to Brentford. We bottled against Arsenal last year. Look at the guy's fucking CV. And that is what gives you blind faith, right? Mm. And look at the money we're spending and the young players we're investing in and the players that have improved. Mudrich is a key example, right? Mm. Immediately improving under a new improved manager. So I think that this is a gradual process. I know people are saying we're staking one step forwards two step backwards but then guess what i think we can take three steps forward and progress even more and even if we are going to take the drops i think that we're going to rise up bigger and better next year for, for, for me i agree to certain what aspect you said about blind faith about trusting the process but at the same time you got you got to have some sort of a result a team like brentford we should have bullied them easily if we had like an like if buts and maybe if my only had a dick should be my uncle if we had this if we had kind of like a previous team in the past oh we should have beat them we should have bullied them but at the moment i'm looking at those players right now the mentality was got to change like uh, uh, how look, can the look, mentality look, change look, from look, last look, season look, it can't look, click straight away look what, look what happened last week why do we turn up against arsenal last week because it's arsenal we hate them so bad but a week later a 12:30 p.m. kickoff. You should be up for it. Yeah, I saw the record. The record for us here at Stamford Bridge. We only won once at 12:30 p.m. kickoff. Once. After that, nothing. Yeah. Maybe the players need to go to bed earlier. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> which I can't lie, man. It's just like. I understand with your blind fit, but it's just at the moment, it's just like toxic positivity. I always kept... It's I, not toxic. It I'm is. like the least it toxic. Is. It is, Alex. It is. It is toxic positivity. I'm telling you now, at the moment, Alex, look what we got right now. We've got too many pussy players all around the pitch. Yeah. Oh, father. Come, come on, on Alex, mate. Alex, come on, mate. Alex, let's be real. At the moment... Yeah, we've got too many pussies around, can't even break a low block team. You know what? I could lace my boots on, can give you two goals at least. On my life! On my life, Alex. I could do better striker than Jackson. Jackson, I thought he was shit today, man. Like, what, what did he do, Jackson, today? What did he do wrong? Everything, bruv. Everything, it was wrong with Jackson today, yeah? Not clinical enough. We need, he's, not, he's not as physical as people thought he would, he would be. But at the same time, like he just come back from an injury, and then you you throw him in, in, in the deep end against against a Brentford side, a low block team. You always gonna knew he was gonna struggle. Let's be honest with yourself, Alex. Be honest. I'm telling you now. Hey, I'm honest. When it was time for Potter to go, it was time to go. But I backed the guy, and I'm doing the same thing with Pochettino now. Next season is a different story. You've had a season to build, mm. so blind faith doesn't exist anymore then we can say right well you've had a year here you know the project more you know the squad you've been able to bring players you want to bring in because we know he has complete control now apparently um, if that means anything mm. so when I talk about blind faith I'm not just saying close your eyes and believe that Chelsea will win I'm saying that this season fucking hell as long as we finish above 12th and get more than the last 16 in both domestic competitions it's better, isn't it? It's still not good, Father. I'm not saying it's good, but it's better. And hopefully, after that, it will get even better and the jump will be bigger. And we'll have European football to show for it. I mean, that's all I can ask for. I believe that we could get Champions League football before the season started. Maybe that's unrealistic. But whatever happens, we're going to be in a better position next season than we are this season and to me that is progression shown by the manager by the board and we just need a bit of stability after that okay um, can you can you get a guarantee that this player's going to be fit because my issue is that i can't guarantee anything for that, that's the thing that's the issue that we've got at the moment it's just that we're going into the next couple of months now with unknown an unknown quality all of a sudden like oh we we're in a bad position as we state right now and then we could go we could go higher in three months like we just we just cannot be sure at the moment where we are right now, and I, I look at other teams at the moment like like Brentford for, for example, or maybe let alone Man United. They're they're in the same predicament as us, but the difference is with us here yeah, we've got the players that we want, but it's just like the execution to where where we go at the moment is kind of like it's in the middle, and that's the problem that we've kind of had this season. It, like like you said, like progression wise, but at the same time. Are you really gonna gonna kind of like stay with your in the same hymn sheet, like because 
we've got a young squad. Like there's could there's there's gonna be in some inconsistency for week in week out. Like for me, at the moment, it's just like right. We got we got Tottenham next week. They're 14 points ahead of us, Alex. 14, 14 points. They're gonna be at 17, 17 next week if they beat us. This is Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur, by the way. We always bullied them at the at their ground. Look what happened. We, we it's kind of like we're we're at the moment we're we're overcooked pancake. We're shit. Okay, we're shit. But I'm just gonna at the end of the day. The only positive to the thing today was was Cole Palmer because I thought he was exceptionally good today. But other than that, man, it's been a kind of drossing, same old, same, same old, same old Chelsea, you know, overconfident in the first um, pre-match and then lackluster when we get to play in the game. But Thank you very much, mate. Always a pleasure, Father. What a fucking debate, mate. <laughs> Love it.